Hello there YouTube, 154 here. Today I'm going to be going over the threat of severe weather for today, tomorrow, Saturday, and the upcoming week to end May, but also the possibility of a fairly disturbing setup to begin June that could indicate what is to come and it ain't looking pretty. So you can find all of that in today's video. So let's get to the gist of things. Today, there are two areas of slight severe risk, one over here and the other over here. So Texas has two areas of concern, and that includes portions of northeastern New Mexico and far western Oklahoma and Panhandle as well. And then also two areas of marginalized severe weather, one extending from central Colorado and down into western Texas again. And then the other with Eastern Montana taking the cake for the most part. Now there is a mesoscale discussion for the possibility of a watch being issued, but it's rather low at only 20%. Why? Because there isn't that much shear to work with. So you're not going to see as much of a encouragement to organization as we may see down here where there could be one or two small clusters forming. Not quite an MCS, but small clustering developing. But over here, they're going to be more discreet. So they feel, and I think they are right about this, that a watch is not going to be necessary. So for today, there is a 2% risk of a brief week tornado down here in far southwestern Texas. In con in terms of the wind, there are two 15% areas now. This is where shear is a bit more prevalent. And also the downdraft cape is fairly decent. So there will be more of a wind threat over here. And then again, up towards again, mainly Montana. And then a, again, two 15% risk for hail. Not going to be nearly as large as yesterday, thankfully. Yesterday really was something that I don't think anyone saw coming. I, I mean, we knew that there would be severe storms, but not nearly as bad as that rogue supercell traveling from the border of Colorado, New Mexico, all the way down to somewhere around here, producing up winds of up to 90 miles per hour at times, a large tornado, and a very large hail. So, again, thankfully that is not going to happen today. Now tomorrow, you look here, two areas again of slight severe risk, but this time um, you have the one up to the north towards southeastern Montana, northeastern Wyoming, and the other in the western Texas Panhandle in eastern New Mexico. Why? Well for one, there's a somewhat better chance of tornadoes now. For now, it's a 2% risk, but depending on how convective trends evolve, especially especially um, dependent on what happens in the morning, if more daytime heating can come in, then there could be an increase to a 5% tornado risk. So we are going to have to monitor that closely. As the uh, atmosphere is actually prime for organizing storms and it is possible that a couple here and there may drop brief and weak tornadoes. Wind, 2 15% um, wind risk areas, since there will be better shear up here and again over here. It is possible that we could see a MCS develop down here, whereas here we may see a small cluster develop, but the thing though is the widespread um, convective presence that will occur over here so you'll see it wouldn't be more prevalent and the same goes for hail but this time you may notice a black hashed area towards eastern New Mexico what is that well if you do not know it is basically uh, the storm prediction center saying hey there is a possibility that we could see some very large hail possibly up to golf ball size to around two inches in diameter so You'll have to once again watch out for large hail because that's pretty much the same area that Rogue Supercell went through. So, again, hail is going to be a concern. 
Saturday, though, looks to be the calmest day of them all, with a rather narrow but long marginalized severe risk. So still isolated, strong to severe storms are expected, but for the most part, it will be calmer than the past several days, but also the days to come. So let's move on to the weather models. Okay, so for this part of the forecast, I'm going to show you the JAMA RDPS. Now, typically, especially for last year, then I would show you guys the NAM resolution, but for some reason, starting last winter, this the NAM model has slapped majorly behind in terms of performance compared to the other models, with it showing things being far cooler. I mean, it's... It's supposed to be in the 80s and 90s next week here, but it shows at the most 85. And that's on the hottest day. So now the Canadian, on the other hand, has been handling uh, convective trends far better. So I feel much safer in following this model's guidance. So for today, um, up to... Uh, 3,402 joules per kilogram of surface base instability. So we have strong surface heating going on here. And then uh, kind of calming down here, but still 1 to 2K. But then once again, reaching up to nearly 3,500 joules per kilogram of surface base instability. So more than optimal enough for the development of severe thunderstorms. And then as you move on into the night, as per typical, as you have the loss of thermal heating and surface heating, it dwindles away. And then storms would be reliant on most unstable cape if it hangs around. But then uh, come Friday, where we have that, those two areas of slight severe risk, not nearly as intense in terms of instability down here, but then definitely more noticeable up here with it. At one point, nearly reaching, oh, come on, nearly um, four thousand joules per kilogram. So stronger surface heating, but we we'll, we may also need to monitor um, Idaho and northern Utah. Looks like quite a bit of instability forming there as well. But you notice that there's this narrow band of being channeled up to the north. I mean, if you watch it it literally moves to the north that's your small narrow ridging pattern that's going on so you have a cold front here but the low pressure system stalled so then you have this warm front that stretches all the way out to here but the warm destabilized sector is hanging back for now and that's what you're going to see for the rest of may saturday which is anticipated to be calmer although honestly I wouldn't be too surprised if we saw a slight risk get issued somewhere around here because there is a whole lot of instability and as a matter of fact storms are fairly widespread too so honestly I wouldn't be too surprised if we ended up seeing a slight risk of severe weather gain issued somewhere around here and then Let's go back to surface base cape. So Saturday could be yet another dangerous day. And then Sunday, once again, could be another severe day with possibly up to 4,000 some joules per kilogram surface base instability over here. And then once again, one to three K joules per kilogram. But then in isolated sector of um, 1,000 to 2,000 joules per kilogram of surface base instability. But then uh, what you're going to see happen as we head into the um, concluding portions of May is that starting the Tuesday, so here's Monday, again, yet another day that might be potentially hazard especially for Nebraska um if you look at the precipitation showing the development of possibly either MCS or some sort of small cluster but 
and moving in a rather unusual direction. It would not be the first time that such a thing has happened. It actually happened to me last year. It starts moving to the southeast like it usually does, but then it turns and moves to the southwest while it's in its dying stages. And then come Tuesday though, you're going to start seeing your instability starting to move to the east so that now Minnesota and Northwestern Iowa are impacted, but also noticeably much stronger surface heating 5220 i mean 69 joules per kilogram instability in terms of temperatures that's why i mean look at this up to 90 here some 90s here and there but then where the most um unstable conditions are present widespread 80s so it's definitely understandable and then Dew points of up to 71. That means it's going to be a rather muggy day for you guys. And the vorticity is pretty decent. So any storms that do develop will have pretty much no trouble developing. So um, Tuesday especially could be a day to watch. But thankfully it looks like other than towards Colorado and into western Texas where a MCS may develop. Convection should be more discreet. And then Wednesday, it moves even further to the east with now portions of northern Wisconsin and all the way. And, and this is the other thing. While it's moving more to the east, you also have the area of instability spreading out to the west yet again. So you have the northern portions pretty much floating up. Now why? It's because you have this area of high pressure towards the Canadian Shield that's going to start sagging slowly to the southwest. So as you can see, um, a clearly defined cold front develops by the time you arrive to next week Friday. So from Wisconsin all the way into Montana, it is certainly possible that we see areas of possibly some loose um, either MCSs or small clusters forming and then uh, towards the west you have more areas uh, where the convection is widely scattered and then other areas where it's a bit more numerous possibly some multicellular clusters forming and then Friday um, could be pretty bad. I mean, wind shear isn't the strongest at all, much like with all of the other days. Wind shear is not going to be that present at all, but with all of the lapse rates in Cape that's going to be present, there will be a severe threat. And then the cold front makes its way into the um, central United States come June 4th. Now, there are some timing differences, but here's where um, we start to see a troubling trend set up. Now, you may be thinking, well, I mean, there's a cold front moving through, and now most of the eastern United States and northern United States are pretty much nearly free of Cape, so why is it bad? So, why is it bad? Now, the GFS delays the timing of the cold front but much like with the NAM it also underestimates the cape so while maybe showing a, I would shouldn't say measly but a meager 1000 to maybe isolated 2000 joules per kilogram instability in reality some of those areas are probably reaching 3000 but anyways moving on this is what I would call a process of someone pushing on the inflated bag so in this case, the cold front is the person or person shoving on the inflated back and then uh, the instability being bottled up into the southern United States is the bag. Slowly but surely, it seems to get less and less inflated until you look to the west. Then uh, um, as the days come by, you see this. the air in this case seems to reinflate and why well eventually if someone is really pushing on that bag 
sooner or later it's got to burst and come around the second week of June it will burst as you can see here the first push the first explosion in this case sends a whole lot of instability into the northern United States so already a rather intense severe threat but also this time it appears that wind shear is going to be more prevalent with a supercell composite of 17 here and up to 10 in Wisconsin so there's the first explosion so what about the second it, again it seems to relax with it focusing on the central United States until once again yet another explosion it surges to the north whole lot of instability I mean some of these days I wouldn't be too surprised if we saw enhanced or even moderate risk being issued because that is a lot cave not only that but again it looks like shear is going to be much more prevalent with supercells being more of a threat and also consequentially tornadoes but that also means that if you're right along this area um, MCS's are definitely going to become a concern and then there's yet another explosion so basically it looks like June is going to be just filled and filled with these explosive um, cape processes so I wouldn't be too surprised if June definitely would become memorable for its numerous and I mean numerous amounts of severe weather especially uh, for the south in some cases and then the northern United States in other cases so what about the threat of derechos honestly I would not know if derechos are going to be a concern for sure I would be too surprised if we had several MCS's occur but Honestly, the setup is kind of similar to 2019. If you remember that year, it was also an El Nino year, much like it this summer is going to be an El Nino year. So, 2019, you had two derechos in the course of two days slam the upper Midwest, particularly Wisconsin. With July 19th, you had the great blowdown of northern Wisconsin. And the July 20th, you had the double punch derechos slammed this time southern Wisconsin and into Michigan both those caused widespread damage so again I cannot verify that there will for sure be a derecho but I will say this much that June is going to be a rather active month and will definitely be something to keep a very very close eye on so that's going to conclude today's video thank you for watching this hope you were informed and prepare for the month that lies ahead.